Hi, welcome back to the Dime Out channel. Or if you're new to me, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I'm Chris Bilton. I was a professional jeweler for over 20 years in the UK, but now I'm living in Japan. I got married to a Japanese woman, so now I'm living in Japan and uh, keeping myself busy by making jewelry, making instructional videos and putting them on YouTube. So welcome. Uh, have a look through the videos on the channel. If you find stuff useful, why not click like and subscribe and help the channel grow. Um, today, I'm gonna melt up some platinum. I'm gonna be just concentrate on melting up platinum. And I have decided to not do it here. I'm going over to Naosan shop, which uh, Naosan was the lady who did the setting lesson for me. So I'm going back over there to use her equipment because <laughs> my little torch will do it, but it will probably use a whole canister of gas to get me to, to enable me to melt the platinum. So I'm going to use her gas instead. I have prepared a charcoal block. I'll put a link on the screen to show what I do for preparing charcoal blocks. So you can do little melt ups in your own little workshop set up at home. Um, I'm going to take that with me because I want to use that to show that it's possible doing it with platinum as well. It does uh, does wear out the charcoal a lot, so you have to work quite quickly, but it's totally possible. Even platinum, it's got really high melting temperature, but it works fine even even in charcoal. Uh, so, right, let's go to the mountain mobile. Okay, the eagle has landed. Welcome to Floss Ferry. I'm with Now Sound, she's just here off screen doing some setting. Uh, I'm about to go to the back and melt some platinum up, so I'll show you how it's done. And I wanted to show you melting platinum into a charcoal block, because some people say you cannot melt platinum into charcoal, like it poisons it somehow, ruins it. I don't think that's the case. I've never had any bad experience. So to prove that, as long as you've got oxypropane set up at home, you can melt platinum at home in your, into your charcoal block and you won't have a problem. Okay, I've been given all the uh, correct eyewear. Um, when you're melting bits of platinum, yeah, I would highly recommend no hard metal. So there's a bit of chenille, platinum chenille. That's not getting melted because that's hard alloy. And definitely no solder. Solder is for soldering. It's not for melting into your metal. So the rest of these little bits will get melted together. So I'm putting all my bits in there. I'm gonna be blowing the heat from that side because there's a lot of heat and a lot of pressure on the flame and it will disintegrate your charcoal block a bit. So blow it that way, otherwise you'll disintegrate in that side and you're just gonna open up that hole to the edge. Also bits, bits like that, that's quite a useful chunk. You might not wanna melt that up because that'd be useful for ring sizings or turning to wire in the future. Um, I'm just gonna melt it up today just so I've got a nice big chunk of platinum. What do you use for flux? I was supposed to bring my borax, what? borax cone, flux. Do you know flux? Flux. Flux. Yeah, soldering. Green? What that? What's that? Something weird in Japanese. Flux. Chigo? I don't know. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you know when soldering. Ah, I that. Yeah. <laughs> that is that acid. I don't know what that was. It like like toilet cleaner. <laughs> Yeah. Then melt. Hey. I use. Hmm. Oh, okay. Always. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, we we'll use that one. <laughs> yeah. We're still not sure we understand each other. <laughs> I think this is okay. This is so sodium borate. Borat. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Borax. Let's go. Hey. Hey. Okay. Yeah, we use this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna help help metal flow, yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay, this sarigato. Okay, normally I would put a bit of heat on and then just touch it with my ball borax cone. But this is like powder. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some on now. So yeah, you need like quite a hissy hissy flame. I mean, I don't think even that's enough. All right, goggles on. So on the screen, that might just look like a white blob. It's melting the smaller bits in there.
Uh, so yeah, basically I'm sort of thin bits will melt quite quickly and then you end up with a kind of melted blob in the middle and I try and spread that melted blob about but it's only melting when it's on the flame so as soon as you move the flame where it just was isn't melting anymore so you need to try and move it about until you get the whole thing melting. Be nice to dab it again with the borax cone. So yeah, basically you get it to melt, get all your bits to melt together and then you might want to take the flame off and roll it over, melt the other side, make sure you're getting it all, all melted together. It's useful if you can kind of melt it into a, a long kind of shape and then that's going to go through the mills much easier for you rather than melting it until you end up with a ball that's kind of more difficult to hold on to and put through mills so I like quite a long shape and uh, so yeah it's still really hot so I'll just put it down somewhere next to it where it's still safe and um, yeah just let it cool down a bit. Okay so thank you for joining us today uh, I hope it was useful I proved that uh, metal can be melted in a charcoal block. It does take a lot of the charcoal away because of the heat and the pressure of the flame, but you can get it done. And um, people have commented in the past on my videos saying you cannot melt platinum into charcoal because the charcoal does something scientific to the platinum and it ruins the platinum. I've never experienced that. Uh, when I get back home, I'll put that metal we melted today through the mills and we'll work on it, look at it a bit more closely, and uh, I'll prove to you there's not a problem. So. Yeah, I'll do that when I get back later. Okay, and we're back. Back in the workshop, aka at home. <laughs> okay, first of all, let's have a look at my charcoal block. <laughs> Wore it out quite a lot. I mean, the heat is so intense, really blasting it, just turns it, vaporizes it, whatever it does. Uh, do you remember I said in the video as well, like, I wanted to blow the heat from that side because you can see how it wore it away. If I was blowing the heat from that side, it would have just gone through this little wall and I'd have a big dip down the side. And obviously that's not safe as well. When you've got molten metal, you don't want it rolling out the side of your charcoal block. So bear that in mind if you're gonna go for it with platinum into charcoal. Um, so th this is the platinum. That's what I love about platinum. It's very clean metal. You can melt it up, you can heat it up, and it just, it's just shiny and nice the whole time. So I just wanna mill it out a little bit and uh, I'm not liking the rust that's on my <laughs> rollers. <laughs> it's getting a bit steamy out here in Japan, it's getting really hot already. Going to Naosan shop on my motorbike was like 40 minutes on my bike, and uh, I'm surprised my nose isn't more sunburnt than it is. It's kind of here. There we go. Feels good, no crunching sounds. <laughs> Feels very normal. Perfectly fine, I'll kneel it and I'll squeeze it quite hard next time. Okay, I'm back. Just annealed it. When you're annealing platinum, yeah, I would definitely put the eye protection on, even though you're not melting it. Uh, still get it, like, white hot. I, I reckon you should just flash it white hot. Uh, so it's going to be difficult to look at that with your eyes. Uh, if you don't have eye protection, you end up not annealing it properly because you stop annealing because it's hurting your eyes too much. Okay, I want to squeeze it quite hard. Just to show you, kind of prove to you, also to myself, that I was right. <laughs> you can uh, you can work with platinum that is melted in charcoal and not have any problems. Um, that's fine. There's no problem with the metal at all. Let me show you a close up. Is that close enough for you? With your most critical eye, seeing any porosity or anything in there? 
No cracks on the corners. I've been squeezing it pretty hard. It's fine. Okay, so that's that for this video. Check out this t-shirt I got on today. When you prove yourself to be the best apprentice jeweler in your country, you get to go on to represent Great Britain at the World Skill Olympics. And uh, <laughs> that's how old I am, 1999. Uh, it was in Montreal, it's every two years. And uh, the time I did it was in Montreal. So um, there you go. <laughs> I got a t-shirt, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, literally. Uh, right, so I wanted to do this platinum video because uh, in the comment, it's been mentioned a few times in the comment section, people saying you can't melt platinum in charcoal, like something happens, the charcoal ruins the platinum, and uh, it's, it's a myth, it's not true. I've, uh, I've done it loads of times in the past, I was a bit confused reading it for the first time, and uh, so I wanted to kind of prove you can do it. Melted in charcoal, I've been rolling it out, annealed it, just, I don't know, there's no problem, I don't know, it's, it's people make stuff up and put it on the internet, so it's not true, but that's what's fun with this channel, I can hear a myth and I can be like, that's not true, and uh, I can just make a video proving proving the myth wrong, so that's kind of fun. Um, cool, right, that's it for today, if you want to help the channel grow, help me do more videos like this, debunking myths in the jewellery trade, uh, I would love to do that, but I need a little bit of help and... Uh, so I call for patrons and YouTube members. So there's links in the description. I'll put a link on the screen, but for an actual link you can click on, go to the description of the video and then uh, follow that. And then you can find out all the perks of becoming a member or a patron. And um, yeah, I'll be grateful and, help, and you'll be helping the channel grow and uh, continue into the future. So that'd be cool. Uh, right, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. No, sorry, not goodbye. I need to say thank you to The Flying Chef. Flying Chef, thank you very much for becoming a patron. And also thank you for your regular commenting on the videos. I really appreciate that as well. That helps the channel grow a lot. It, when there's a bit of uh, action going on in the comment box, uh, it really does work for the YouTube algorithms as well to help, help it, uh, YouTube understand that the videos are, are valuable to people and um, worth sharing to more people. So yeah, if you wouldn't mind clicking like and subscribe if you haven't done already, and then also just writing something in the comment box like hello goodbye i don't like you anything even negative comments is all it's all good for the channel uh right cool right now it really is goodbye goodbye see you next time